Hi, I'm Cameron McKenzie. I'm the editor-in-chief over at the serverside.com and I wanted to talk to you about some of the popular static code analysis tools that are currently on the market that can help you improve the quality of your Java applications. So one that everybody needs is check style. So check style, it does just that. It checks the style of your code, enforces various rules about, you know, where uh, white spaces, uh, how your curly brackets are formatted. Um, and so it's really a style checking tool. A lot of that stuff can be done actually through even just formatting your code in an IDE. So some of the, the basic stuff isn't that impressive, but it also does some checks to make sure that you are staying honest in terms of good design. So it can also indicate where you've created classes that aren't designed for extensibility. Um, so it can give you insights on, you know, maybe errors that you're making inside of your design as it not only uh, checks your design, but also looks at how well structured your code is and uh, make sure that you are enforcing style guidelines. The next static code analysis tool everybody needs is find bugs. The cool thing about find bugs is it'll take a look at your byte code. Compare your byte code to a, a list of, of known anti patterns and identify errors and mistakes and opportunities for for bugs to arise in your application simply by inspecting the compiled bytecode. And so find bugs, it's got plugins for Jenkins, it's got plugins for Eclipse. So there really is no reason for software developers not to be running a find bugs check every time they compile their code. And if not at compilation, at the very least, uh, when you do a, a build of your project and push something into a, a GitHub repository. Another one I like is PMD. So whereas find bugs works on bytecode, PMD actually just looks at your source code and it can find things like, I don't know, um, unused variables, uh, unused imports, unnecessary loops that occur in your code, um, variables that aren't initialized. Uh, it can even help to do things like enforcing try catch blocks, find finally or, or catch blocks that'll never be encountered. Um, so whereas find bugs works on your bytecode, PMD does a similar task, but it actually looks at your source code. And so again, lots of plugins for Eclipse, for Jenkins, for Gradle. So there's no reason every time you do a build, every time you do push into GitHub before doing that, make sure that you haven't introduced any new problems into your code. Another one that I like is Jococo. Jococo in uh, Cobertura as well. These are code coverage tools. So what these tools do is they make sure that you have unit tests for all of your methods. So it can tell you, it can look at your source code, look at your unit tests and say, hey, look, there are three methods here that aren't tested at all. Or there's a class here and only 80% of the methods in it uh, actually have test coverage. Or it can even take a look at a method and see how many different routes there are through a method, right? Because obviously if you have one method, uh, but it's got an if block, there's two routes through that method, depending on if the, the if block is true or if the if block is not true and it goes through an else. Um, so it can actually do, I think it's called McCabe code complexity calculations, but it can say, hey, there's, there's five routes through this program, but you've only got three unit tests and um, they're not doing 100% coverage on this particular method. And that's invaluable information. You should never send code into production unless every line of code has been uh, tested at least once. And so those are two tools that do similar things. Jococo and Cobertura, highly recommended. And of course, then there's SonarCube. And SonarCube is sort of a dashboard, one-stop shop to do all of these things. So it, it runs, you know, your check style tests. It does source code analysis. It does byte code analysis. It also does some cool things too, like making sure that people haven't copy and pasted code from one spot to another. It can give you insights on whether you've got enough comments in your code or too many Java doc comments in your code as well. And it can break those 
bugs down into major critical blockers, minor. Um, and it's doing a lot of things that just the other tools do, but it brings them all together into one spot. Uh, the other nice thing about SonarCube is it maintains a history. So over time, you can see if your application is introducing new bugs or whether you're reducing the bugs that already exist inside the application. So uh, a great tool to have, and similarly, the, that can easily be integrated into Jenkins. It can easily be integrated into you know, almost any continuous integration tool. It integrates into Maven. It integrates into Gradle. Um, so there really is no excuse not to be using a tool like SonarCube uh, to get a good idea of what's going on inside of your code. And there you go. Those are five interesting, powerful, open source, free to use to a certain extent, um, static code analysis tools that, you know, every software developer should be using, right? You want to inspect your byte code. You want to inspect your source code. You want to make sure that you're complying with style guidelines. You want to make sure that you're doing proper code coverage and you want to evaluate the complexity of all of your different methods. And those static code analysis tools all do that. There are also vendor ones. I think that, you know, there's, it was HP Fortify. Um, there's ones from IBM as well. So there's vendors on the market that are also in the space. So those when their tools are, are important to check out as well. Um, but that gives you a basic overview of what static code analysis tools you should have um, and which ones you can easily integrate into your build and deployments.